Philip. There's no coolant in the engine. Sure, mom wasn't driving it. Alright guys, today we're going to give you an overview of the 1985 Camaro that we built a couple years ago. This is what we call affectionately the Crap Marrow. My dad and I built it originally for the $3,000 Hoopty Challenge that David Freiberger and Mike Finnegan were putting on. Unfortunately, recently it has blown a head gasket or cracked a head, we're not sure which, and it definitely wasn't my fault. And your dad still loves you, meathead. I guess I'll give you a brief overview of what the car is and what it has done. It's a uh, aluminum 5.3 liter. It has a sloppy stage one camshaft. It has truck heads, a truck intake. Uh, we've really learned a lot on this car. This was the second Turbo LS combo that we ever did. And you can see the uh, truck manifolds that we used. Uh, the car originally was set up with a GT45 turbo and we uh, really learned a lot by using that turbo. Those turbos are notoriously um, kind of junk, but we learned a lot with the torque converter on how to uh, get the right stall speed and get it to spool off of the line. We learned a lot of that on this car and uh, we got the GT45 to work really, really well. We went a 978 at 139. 139. With the GT45, which is honestly one of the uh, better times that I've ever seen with one of them. And also, this was the very first car that I went a nine in the quarter mile with. And I think it's time for a change. So You're not putting another six cylinder in another car, bud. But Dad... <laughs> hey, don't put Dad me. You got enough six cylinders around here. No, we uh, definitely not going to do that um, as much as some of you might uh, want that. It's time for a change. It's, I think it's time for the turbo to come off, honestly. Uh, the turbo is a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of extra maintenance and hassle. And if you're trying to make a consistent drag car, a turbocharger is really not the way to go because they can be so unpredictable. Recently you have been seeing us do a lot of videos on the Ford Fairmont Futura 
And our plans until recently were to take that car to the Midwest Drags. Well, looking at the dates and the amount of time that we have left to dial the car in, it really doesn't make sense. The Camaro is already a well-sorted street car. It just has a blown head gasket. So we're going to totally change the setup and make it even more reliable. And we're going to take this to Midwest Drags instead of the Futura. We still plan to take the station wagon, but we really need something that is going to be very reliable, easy to find parts for, and easy to work on. So come along for the ride. Hey guys, well, we bought a set of Universal Gen 3 LS headers, and one of the things that always troubled me was how did they know exactly where the engine's at? Well, we took a chance on it because the headers were relatively cheap, and uh, we got bit. The headers don't fit. It is clearly uh, because the engine placement doesn't match this set of headers. In order to make this set of headers work, we would have to move the whole engine back, which would require motor mount modifications, uh, cross member modifications, and shorten the drive shaft. It turned out that we have a set of big block headers for a Gen 3, and that's what these are. I've already started cutting the flanges off here. What we're going to do is we're going to push this up in the car. I've made some brackets which will hold the header in a position. I've also welded a tab on the bottom here just for temporary support so that we can duplicate the position as we take the header in and out and start connecting the tubes to the flange that's on the engine. So what we'll do is we'll tie one or two of the ports in. We'll use our temporary brackets which hold the big block header in place. I took the bottom head bolts out already. Once we have everything tacked together, we'll take the rest of the head bolts out, pop the head off, and that'll give us some flexibility to get the header out. When we decided to change the engine in this, we knew that we wanted to go to naturally aspirated, and we also want to be able to run nitrous in the future. So that dictated that we went to an inch and seven eighths tube, which will support 600 plus horsepower. An inch and five eighths is only going to be good for about 400. An inch and three quarter will be good for about 500. Inch and seven eighths is good for a little over 600. We're anticipating the engine's going to make probably a little over 500. 100 shot of nitrous. We need 600 horsepower worth of header flow. And that's why we wanted to go with the inch and seven eighths. All right, so a lot of you probably just said you're going to bolt big block Chevy headers to an LS. How the heck are you going to do that? Well, as you can see, the uh, original big block Chevy flange is here. And you can see that it's at a very different angle and much wider than what the LS is. And if we go to the other side, you can see that we haven't modified this header yet. And you can see it's a very different in how it sits in the car. So basically what we've done is we've made some temporary jigging for here that bolts to the big block Chevy header plate. And then we cut the tubes off of the header and we're essentially making new tubes that run to the LS header flanges so that we can bolt it up to an LS. So it definitely won't be able to bolt to a big block Chevy anymore, but but this should make a lot more horsepower per pound. And the car's already set up for an LS, so this is what we're going with. The goal is to work on this header on the chassis as little as possible. So by making these jigs that we just showed, you can then remove the header once you have a couple of uh, points to land it in relation to the head, you can take it off of the car and now we can get all of the rest of the tubes made off of the car where it's a lot easier to see, weld, and fabricate tubes. 
Whenever we're building headers, you have to consider quite a few things. Uh, a few of those things are, how do you get your bolts in and out? You need these pipes to go in places where you can get sockets uh, and or wrenches in place so that you can put the bolts in and out. And another thing you need to consider is your spark plugs. You need to have access for the spark plug boot and you need to have access for your tools to get in there so that you can remove the spark plug easily. Other things to consider is you want to make sure that the suspension parts fit the car and can go through the full range of motion, that it clears your cross members, your mounts, and you need to be able to take the header on and off the car with the engine in the car. like that we have a naturally aspirated engine so we're also going to run this intake that you see here and we're hopefully going to do some fun testing with injector timing and that sort of thing but you're going to see that on future episodes so we're going to try and go live here in a couple hours and try to get this engine out the new engine in fired up so make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.